So the Biden administration turned down Ohio's request for disaster assistance today following a train derailment that caused a huge toxic chemical spill, leaving residents fearing for their lives. FEMA argues that toxic spill that blanketed the town of East Palestine two weeks ago does not qualify as a traditional national, natural disaster like tornado or hurricane. Health officials continue to insist that the water and the air is safe but the people who live there are understandably concerned. Joining me now is Brian Kilmeade, co-host of Fox and Friends, host of One Nation with Brian Kilmeade and the Brian Kilmeade radio show and the author of The President and the Freedom Fighter. It just never ends with you. Well, you know what? We're just about to start. All right. Let's 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 start then with this. Uh, the White House turns down East Palestine requests for disaster relief, at least by FEMA, saying it doesn't qualify. What do you make of that? Well, they say the Stafford Act says that the company that caused the spill caused the wreckage, caused the derailment, uh, caused the, what we're witnessing now should be paying, and all indications are they will. Mm. If you look at what the FEMA says, we step in when no one else is, and there's physical damage. So if the train fell into the town, rolled into the town, <laughs> rolled over all the houses, there'd be physical damage. Yeah. So they're splitting hairs. So with the problem I have is, Governor DeWine's a Republican. You got a Congressman Bill Johnson, an uh, Air Force officer. Right. Why are they being so compliant, saying everybody's doing everything that's needed? Well, in particular, the people are so feeling feeling so differently than their Republican leaders. Yeah. Well, they say, by the way, this is a, a White House source told Fox Digital, what East Palestine needs is much more expensive than what FEMA provides. But a month ago, just one month ago, President Biden was in California. Of course, it was a natural disaster. It wasn't a man-made disaster. But he told the governor there at a press conference, he said, we told the governor that we do everything we can, whatever he needs. The federal government is not leaving its responsibility until all is fixed. And then he says FEMA has positioned supplies for 100,000 meals, 100,000 liters of water, and they're not even giving water to these people. These people are getting $1,000 checks from the company to buy water and other supplies, but nothing from FEMA when the president said it do do anything it could for blue state California. A couple of things stand out. When you said the president said... The president doesn't even talk about this. The president didn't have a press conference with this. The president didn't have a meeting with anyone uh, with this. There was no, well, the, my heart goes out to. Yeah. There's no rhetorical, there was nothing for two, two and a half weeks. There's nothing for, obviously, from the Secretary of Transportation. And then you have a Republican governor who says, well, I've been in constant contact with him. Well, do you mind telling the people that are actually afflicted by it, yeah. that have to wonder if they can drink the water? Well, so far, it's testing fine. Well, as of today, what time is it? Because the, because the chemicals are seeping downward, that's a lot of these people have wells. Well, a lot of those videos are just awful. Where the, they had the senator there, J.D. Vance, scraping the bottom of that of that creek bed, and and you could see the the rainbow of colors that you usually see from oil spills. I mean, it's clearly not all right. And what they say is, don't play in the creeks. Okay, yeah. the November creek swim is going to be off. Excuse right. me, the February creek swim is going to be off, but that's not the point. Uh, they say, well, there's not a lot of frogs anyway. Well, the ones that are there are pretty much dead. So that these are legitimate issues, and there's so much you learn, David, because you know this, by, because you lived in Central and South America. When people talk about it, you're like, oh, excuse me, I know the blocks. I know the people. I know the players. So much different than when someone says, okay, Norway and Sweden, well, I've never been there, perhaps. Uh, I don't really know, so I'll read about it. There's something about showing up, rolling up your sleeves, yeah. looking people in the eye, hearing yes. what they're saying, realizing 12 people are saying the exact same thing, have the exact same concerns, boom, I think I have something. You get that call from, I think it was Arrowhead Water from Pennsylvania. Right. They watched an interview on our channel, and they came over with free water for the entire town. The federal government can't write a temporary check. There's no column to pull that and out like of. Like you say, they can't even show up. I mean, the EPA finally finally got there, uh, I guess it was yesterday. And, and let me play the sound of the chief, the EPA chief, uh, Michael Regan is his name, explaining why it took him so long to get there. Roll tape. When you bring in a senior official, especially at the cabinet level, you divert or pull away resources from the emergency response, uh, from the state police and the like. And so we wanted to be sure uh, that the emergency responders had all the resources and the focus to do what they've done. He went on to say that the air is fine. What do you make of him? 
Well, I mean, what is he, the, the rock star Kevin Costner come to town yeah. or Bono? Yeah. He has a big entourage. Now, in theory, people have said that before when the president comes in after a natural disaster, they got to clear it out, they got to secure it. For the EPA director, believe me, there's two or three guys, two with the pads, maybe a security guy, so especially, they come in with their own transportation. That is the most ridiculous excuse possible. You get down there, you show up for two weeks. I just hope this is not the case. I hope it's because 70% of that area voted Republican. And I just hope mm. because uh, the last two presidential elections went eight points for the Republican. I hope that has nothing to do with it. My fingers are crossed it doesn't. Because Barack Obama showed up in Michigan, drank the water in Flint, Michigan, which is still not okay. Just gave everyone the idea that mm -hmm. I'm at least with you. Yeah. And that was a Republican well, government. You mentioned transportation. Then we have the case of uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, who was talking. What was he talking about? It wasn't, wasn't racist roads. Equity. I guess it was, it was white construction workers. Too many white construction They're the worst. workers. They're the worst white They're construction the worst. workers. I, I mean, by the way, I've worked in construction sites. I don't know about you, but nobody, nobody's concerned about color at all there. But anyway, that's what he was talking about when all this was going on. And it just leads you, you know, you get the EPA chief in this administration, Buttigieg. Then we go on into other departments like energy. Granholm's doing a great job. She doesn't even know how much oil we, we consume in a, in a year. And, and you go on and on. Of course, Mayorkas with a border. This administration has a crisis of confidence and management, right? You know, it's interesting because you do this in much more detail on this channel. But you want batteries, you want electric, but you don't want to mine. You go, you go ahead and you want to have a, a zero footprint, but the main people you're competing with are building a coal plant every 10 days. So you have a situation where you want to put sanctions on Ukraine to win a war, but you don't want to put pressure on uh, India to stop buying the oil from Russia. You look only in front of your face. And what the sad thing is, David, you had a former president that used to go meet with the press all the time. Before and after the chopper, so you were able to find out. And he encouraged them to fight back. But he didn't you, walk away when right. they. Uh, Do you ever said talk to Jackie negative. Heinrich and Peter Ducey? They're so frustrated. So is the rest of the press corps because yeah. they get none of their questions answered, and they are our mouthpieces yeah. because the American people walk around to when you go to your sports board tonight and you go to your brunch on Sunday. These are the <laughs> questions you're going to get, David Asman. Tell me why? Yeah. Because we're frustrated. They don't feel they have to communicate with us. I, I cook brunch on Sunday, by the way. I don't go to brunch. I find that hard to believe. I like <laughs> to see true. some still And I wash the dishes. But uh, the point is, is that, that you have all of these heads of departments in the administration. None of them are first qualified for the positions that they have, and they're refusing to deliver. They just can't, either can't or won't deliver. I, I just wonder what's going to happen in the future. I, I want to switch to the economy for a second here because... Obviously, Americans don't think it's going well, but the administration continues to say that it's doing well, and they, they go beyond that. Uh, we had uh, White House spokesperson Jean-Pierre say the other day this about the economy and about what Americans feel about it. Roll that tape. When the president walked into this administration, the economy was tanking, COVID was taking over, was ravaging our country, and he took action to make sure that we got the economy back up and running. Look, when you think about the economy, what the president has done is transform the way we think about it. Transform the way we think about the I don't economy. even know what that means. That, by the way, is the head of the American Prospect. This is the magazine for progressives in the world, the way National Review is for conservatives. They say, talk about the transformation at the heart of Biden's middle out economic agenda. They say almost exactly the same thing. President Biden is attempting to fundamentally transform how Americans understand the economy. So that's the talking point. But Americans don't buy it. Well, the 87,000, they feel they're going to go try to get some blood from the uh, top 1% stone, even though it's going to go down a little bit further with the 87,000 IRS agents. I have not seen any structural change. I see a, com a country coming back rapidly uh, from, uh, from a pandemic. And as you know, there were a million shots in arms when he took over. And I'll take the, anyone would take the economy of President Trump, most people, over President Biden any day of the week. But they're saying that they have transformed the way Americans think about the... I think Americans We've think our standards, that if you maybe? have high inflation, if you don't have the strong growth that we had the last month that the Trump administration was in power, it's not a great economy. Well, the, the jobs thing is, uh, I don't understand why one of every five people isn't working. Uh, the jobs numbers do look good. Unemployment is, in fact, low, but wages are not equaling uh, what inflation is. And the bottom line is, if you're looking to buy a home or sell a home, you're going to re have to rethink it mm -hmm. because you say, well, I'm going to wait for rates to come down. The highest in, what, 10 years, they were at 5 6 percent. When he got the keys to the White House, it was at 2 percent. Right. Where was inflation? So for her to sit out there and say that, what you needed someone to say, 
I don't know what indications outside the yeah. job numbers. I don't think you're based Somebody's on reality. Somebody's got to, you know how Biden whispers, whisper, it's not working. The brainwashing is not but working. The problem Americans is the mid- don't buy the brainwashing. But the midterms reinforced his feeling that he was doing well. Even though they lost the House? Right. Uh, they, they didn't, didn't lose, lose it as badly as... It was expected. Right. 36% of the people want him to run again. Brian Kilmeade, they're giving me the wrap here. You can catch Brian on One Nation. That's Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox. See, Cudlow would just go through that rap sign. (laughs) You just, you're you're too disciplined. Last time (laughs) you were here, I heard him say (laughs) he heard you on the radio when he was driving to his mansion in Connecticut. Yes, that's true. But yeah, you're very disciplined. Brian, God bless you. Thank you.